Hey everyone, in this tutorial we are going to build these three apps from scratch. Starting from Roll Dice app, we are going to move on to To Do app. And finally, we are going to build this quiz app. And these apps are designed for absolute beginners. So it's going to be really, really helpful when you finish these apps. So without wasting time, let's get started and create these projects. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to develop this Roll Dice app and as you can see it's a simple app that's designed for beginners where you can learn Flutter basics like the basic widgets, text, images, column padding and several other basic widgets where every beginner should know. So without wasting time let's get started and develop this. So this is where we are going to get started. I have a default Flutter project running on simulator. So the only thing I did is I created assets folder in my app folder and inside assets folder I created images and here I have some dice images. So you can find these images in the video description. I will put the source code so you can go and take these images and also make sure to create assets inside this dice roller app folder and inside make sure to create images and inside images just put these images and also before we get started go to pubspec.yaml and in the bottom you have to add these assets just add assets and bottom you have to show the directory which is assets images right so after you have done this you can go and start your code from here inside main.art. So first I'm going to remove this my apps and I'm gonna create a new my app, my app. And in my build, I want to return material app. This material app has the home argument and here I want to create a scaffold widget. If I save it, you can see the blank scaffold. And also before we get started, I don't I want to remove this debug banner. So for that, just inside material app, we use just debug show jacket mode banner and you can make it false. Now inside my scaffold, I want to create a body and I want to use container widget. The reason I'm using the container widget because I want to give gradient background color. So inside container, let's use a decoration argument and this requires another widget and I'm going to use box decoration. And inside the box decoration widget, we can give gradient color, gradient. And you can see there are different types of gradients like linear gradient, gradient, radial gradient and sweep gradient. And this project, I want to use linear gradient. And is this linear gradient have several arguments like colors, begin and end. The first thing we have to use is colors. And this is a list we have, we need to create, we need to use square brackets. Inside this, we can use several colors, like for example, colors dot, let's say purple and colors dot deep purple. I'm using two colors and I want to put some comma to format my code and you can see in the left side we have the purple and in the right side we have the purple but I want it like from bottom like top left to bottom right to do that inside linear gradient you can use begin argument and you can use alignment dot top left and end argument alignment dot bottom right and if I save it, you can see the purple color is in the top left and deep color is in the bottom right side. Now you can see our code getting bigger and bigger. So the best practice is to separate our code into a new file. So I'm going to copy this container code. I'm going to press command X to copy. And inside my lib folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm gonna call it components. Inside this components folder, I'm gonna create a new file and call it gradient container.dart. 
Here I'm going to create a stateless widget. Let's call it gradient container. And let's return the container that we have just copied. And now simply in my main dart in my scaffold body, I'm going to import this gradient container. Make sure you import it in the top. You can see if I save it, everything remains the same because we just uh, refactored, we just separated our code. Now in my gradient container, I want to separate my code more. So I want to refactor like I want to take this two arguments into a new variable so outside my class gradient container i want to create const start alignment and i want to put this alignment dot left copy paste also put semicolon and here let's change it to end alignment and it will be bottom right and now here we can remove this alignment and here simply paste the, the variable name and alignment. Now you can see everything is same. Now I want to refactor these colors. So to do that, I want to, inside my stateless widget, I want to create final color, color one and final color, color two, because we have two colors like, right? purple and deep purple now inside my gradient color I need to create this like this dot color one and this dot color two and also comma now simply instead just remove these colors just copy these colors I'm gonna press command X here just put color one column color two and save it and now you can see main.dart shows some red squiggles and the reason why it's asking is that we have to put the colors so I'm going to paste the colors that we, that I have copied colors.purple and colors.deeppurple and now you can see everything still remains the same because we are just refactoring, we are just using the custom widgets we are just using the new variables so I'm going to put const choose this material app to remove these warnings now in my container I want to use child inside my container and I want to show you that we have to use image right for that we have to use image.asset and here the, the directory which is assets images let me show you assets images and here inside images we have dice1.png if I save it now you can see it looks very awful because the only thing you have to do is to wrap this image and with another widget and it's called center you have to wrap this widget with center and if I save it now you can see we have the desired image and desired background so I'm going to put comma and you can see the image looks uh, very big so I want to change the width inside the image asset after you put this directory you can put a width you can use the width argument and for example let's say it's 200 and if I save it now it looks better right so inside this center we have image.asset right and for the child we are using like for the we inside my center we have the child image.asset now I also want to show the bottom in the bottom side so for that I'm going to wrap this image with the column and after this image I can put text bottom and you can see it requires unpressed and child and for the unpressed, unpressed let's make it blank and for the child let's use the text and call it rice 
let's name it like roll dice roll dice and if I save it you can see the roll dice and you can see the image is now going to the top because now we are using column and this will take all the space so inside column just use main axis alignment main axis alignment dot center and this will takes you to the center now you cannot see the text you can see the roll dice so for that inside the text bottom let's use the style text bottom text bottom dot style from and for the foreground color let's save colors dot white and I also want to change the the width of this the size of this text so for that inside style you can use text style text style and font size 28 and you can see it now looks bigger and you can also put cons to remove this warning and another thing I want to do is that between this image and text you can see there is no space so I want to put some space so for that between this image and text button I want to put const sized box and for the height maybe 20 also put comma and if I save it you can see now we have some space you can add more space for example let's make it 30 let's go to gradient container let's make it 30 and save it now it looks better now if I press this nothing will change because we are not using any logic and you can see our gradient container is also getting bigger and bigger so the best practice is to remove this code this from the column you can come you can press command x and inside lib folder and inside components i'm going to create a new file and i'm gonna call it let's say dice roller dot dart and inside that we need to create a stateful widget not stateless widget be careful for that and i'm going to name this dice roller and i'm going to paste it in my build return i'm going to paste the column that i have just copied and in my gradient container i'm going to import this dice roller was it dice roller it was those lores i made a mistake i'm going to change this name dice roller and here we can import this dice roller and if i save it you can see everything looks same and now inside dice roller when we press this button we want to change this dice roller right so for that uh, we need the, the random widget uh, which is the which is, is a, it's, a, it's a dart widget like i mean it's a dart uh, function like first we need to import this uh, it's dart math and inside this dart math first inside this stateful widget we have to create a randomizer like we have to create a new variable and call it current dice and let's make it one and if I put this image like current dice like inside images I can remove this one and if I put current dice dot png you can see it's one but if I change it to two for example and save it and restart the application you can see it will change it now to but I want to make it pressable like I want to create a function here void roll dice and inside this roll dice I'm going to use set state and I want to make the current current dice to random dot next int and it will be like six images so I want to make it six 
and plus one. The reason I'm making plus one because if we put six, it will count as five. So we have to add one more. And if I save it and in my text button, I have to remove this and put it this roll dice. And if I save it and restart the app and if I restart the app and put and also to change this current dice to one to make sure everything works from scratch, restart the app again. And if I roll dice, you can see it's now giving me random like numbers and it's now changing the roll dice. So I hope you guys understand. So that's all about it for this project and I will see you in the next videos. Hello everyone, in this video we are gonna build this simple to do app. As you can see we have a simple functionalities where we can create a new task, we can delete the task and also we can check the checkbox when we are done with the task. So let's get started and create this. This is where we are going to get started. So inside my main dot dart, I imported homepage class from pages inside a homepage dot dart, as you can see. So let's go to homepage dot dart, and here I have, and there is nothing special. Basically, there is a blank scaffold. So this is where we are going to get started. So inside a scaffold, let's just first create an app bar. App bar, app bar. Let's give a title. And for the text, let's say simple to do. And now if I save it, you see the simple to do. Now let's give the big round color for this app bar, colors dot deep purple. And if I save it, you see we have a big round color, but I want to change this text color to the white. So for this, we can give the foreground color, colors dot white, save it. You see now we have a white foreground color. Now let's give the background color to this scaffold. Background color, colors dot deep purple, and shade would be 300. Now we'll see some you know differences between a bar and body. Uh, I mean the scaffold. So now let's just add a const here, and let's just now move on to the body part. So inside a body, what we want. Basically, we want to create a containers, you know, some to do's. So for that, we can use the list view. Basically, uh, specifically, I mean the list view dot builder, list view dot builder, and this actually gets the this list view dot builder actually gets the item builder. So for the item builder, let's add a build context, context, and comma. We also need to specify the index. And this will returns, you know, the item. So we don't have any items yet. We need to create a one here. So let's create a list. Let's name it to do list. And inside this list, let's create another list. And let's say learn web development, for example. And we also need to specify the Boolean, which is uh, for this checkbox, you know, we will add also some checkbox. And let's create one more. Let's say learn. Let's let's say drink coffee. Let's just remove the web development and save Flutter. And now we will remove this const. And here inside a list view dot builder, there is a two things that we need to specify. One is item builder, which we have already specified. The another one is item count. So item count would be to do list dot length. So based on this to do list length, it will create this, it will build this list view. And for the return, we want to return the container. And for the container, we'll add a child. And for the tax, we basically need to specify this uh, to do to do list index which is zero, right? Now, if I save it, you see there is a learn flutter and drink coffee. Uh, let's just add some style to this. 
container I'm going to give some padding and for the padding let's say 20 that we will change it later but you can see we have some padding if I give the container color colors dot um, let's say deep purple if I save it now you see we have a deep purple color of the container now I'm going to give some padding for this container this dot all 20 and if I save it you see we have some paddings of this container now uh, let's just uh, style this text because it's very small and color is black so after to-do list I'm going to add a style text style and first let's change the color colors dot white and next we need to change the font size maybe 18 and if I save it now you see we have a beautiful uh, container with a text and now let's just change these sharp corners to some border radius you know uh, here I'm going to add a inside a container I'm going to add a decoration and it will be box decoration and make sure you put the color inside this decoration otherwise you'll get an error so inside a decoration we have a border radius border radius dot circular and it will be 15 if I save it now you see we have some border radius have a learn flutter and drink coffee but here you see on the in the middle of these two containers we have a huge padding so let's just remove this so in order to remove that we can come to this padding which we wrap up this container instead of all let's say only and just top would be 20 left would be 20 and right would be 20 and finally bottom will be zero and now we add the comma here and if i save it now you see the padding has we have just removed the padding in the middle so now we can see the beautiful ui i hope so it's beautiful not that beautiful but it's i think the normal right now uh, let's just add the cons to remove these warnings i don't like to see them you know now um, let's just separate this you know the the styles that we have inside this list dot builder i'm going to wrap this padding copy and remove from here i'm going to create a separate folder for that so inside a lip uh, folder we want to create another folder which is utils inside a utils i want to create to do list.dart and here let's import package flutter from material.dart let's create a stateless widget and let's say to do list and we'll return this padding if i save it now you see we are getting some errors but don't worry i'm gonna we're gonna actually solve these problems so inside of return let's just import this create to-do list class and you can see it will automatically import the package simple to do inside of utils we have a to-do list.dart now um, let's go to let's go to to-do to-do list.dart and here let's just create you know uh, let's make it uh, dynamic so for that I guess it's the dynamic or I don't know the, the, the arguments the constructor uh, the, let's say parameters right and here we first create a final string uh, task name uh, for the task name right let's, let's just learn flutter and drink coffee and now we I need to add a one more thing and let's just remove this one more thing because you might confuse now and let's just add a final parameter here task name and here we will remove the to-do list index zero and we basically add a task name and here inside a homepage.dart inside a list we have a task name which is to-do list to-do list index zero right 
If I save it now, if I refresh that, you see we don't get any errors and we see the Lauren Flutter and drink coffee. So if you add one more list and let's say for example code with autoback and if I save it you see we will see the one more container. The reason why it's doing is that because we have a list.builder so this list.builder is building the list based on this uh, list that we have just created. Okay, so we can just run, re remove that. I hope you understand it. Now, uh, uh, let's create a checkbox in the left side of this, uh, you know, the container in the, in the string, which is learn flutter or drink coffee. So for this, let's go to to-do list. And let's, inside a container, we have a child and let's wrap this text widget with the row. And inside a row first, Let's create a checkbox and this checkbox parameter will take, you know, two things like value and unchange it. Let's create this here inside a stateless widget. So I'm going to create a final bool and it will be task completed. And one more thing for the function, final function, it will be boolean and let's say it will be delete function right no it's let's say say unchange it unchange it and let's create these constructors save it and here i'm going to for the value it will be task completed and for our unchange it function we added unchange it if i save it and if i go back to homepage.dart and here we can add a task completed and for this we need to add a to-do list indexed one right here we have the to-do list index zero would be this string and index one would be this bool false and now we add we need to add one more thing which is function but before that let's just save it and see that if i save it and see that you see we have a checkbox we can see we cannot uh, if i click on this checkbox we cannot you know check it or uncheck it the reason why is that because we haven't uh, created the function that we have just created which is unchange it so now let's go and uh, create that which is uh, unchange it so for unchange it let's create uh, let's give some value to this and let's create a function called checkbox change it. And this will take uh, basically the index. And now let's copy this checkbox change it. And here inside a home page, I'm going to create a function checkbox change it. And we need to specify integer index. And here inside a checkbox change it uh, what we want we need to specify to do list index one uh, when it's not equal to to do list uh, index one so, so if i now refresh this page and click on this checkbox it will not work can you guess and write in the, in the comment why it's not working because now i will give the solution but before that let's just stop the video and give the solution give the the solution in the comment section so the reason why it's not working is that because we are using stateless widget and we are not changing the state so in order to change the state we need to first actually change the stateless widgets to the we need to convert it to a stateful widget and and after that we need to wrap this to-do list let's copy that and set state and paste it inside a set state and now if i refresh this page and click on this now we can see we can click uh, and we can see the checkbox it's clickable right now let's give some style to this checkbox here i'm going to set a checkbox i'm going to add the color which is the check color 
colors dot white i check it you see it's white now but let's refresh this first and let's also add a fill color colors dot white and where is also active color colors dot white i'm going to remove this fill color and now you see we cannot see the check color because we added the white let's make it black and now you see now we also wanted to change this border side color to the white so for this you can add a side border side and inside a border side we can specify the color colors dot white and now we can save it and refresh you see we have a border side color white now we can click on checkbox and we can uncheck it so the next thing is before the next thing let's just remove these warnings i don't like to see them so now next thing is we need to when we check this uh, checkbox we just want to you know the line through which means that we have done this task so in order to do that we can come to this text decoration text widget and inside a style there is a decoration and for the text decoration we can add dot line through and if i save it even if we don't check this checkbox it will you know line through because we need to add a condition so when we check this checkbox it should line through otherwise it should uh it should be like test decoration dot none so for this we created already the boolean which is task completed so we can use this boolean here so task when task completed what was the name let's just remove this const because it will not work task completed we will use ternary condition when the task is completed we want the text decoration dot line through and otherwise text decoration dot none if i save it and refresh this page again and if i click on this checkbox you see we have a line through if i uncheck it you cannot see that but i want to change some style of this line through uh, for example based on your preference you can give any color i just want another color you know maybe decoration color colors dot white which one is better black or white i i feel like white is better let me know in the comments so i also want to change the thickness of this line there is a decoration thickness i want to make it two so again i'm saying it's not really necessary to you know to follow my you know the ui it's your preference you can change it whenever you want so now we are done with also checkbox so now the next thing is we want to add a, you know some uh the button here on the, in the bottom so we want to add more you know to do more tasks so for that uh, let's go to home page and inside a home page we have the app bar and we have the the body so after the body we want to create a floating action button and for this floating action button we have a floating action button widget and this will require it's unpressed i'm going to make it blank now and now you see we, do, we have a floating action button let's create an icon icons dot add and now this icon we need to add inside a child actually and if i save it now you see we have an add icon but when we press this icon button we don't see anything but we will write some uh, condition function inside of unpressed but before that let's just also add some text field here on the left side of this function so for that uh, inside a floating action button we need to wrap this floating action button widget with a row and before floating action button uh, we need to actually you know create a text field but when i create a text field and save it it will disappear so we need to remove uh, we need to wrap this text field widget with another widget which is expanded and now if i save it 
you will see the text field as well as the bottom so now let's give some style because it, it looks very bad now so let's wrap this text field with the padding and let's say not all but let's say symmetric horizontal maybe 20 and if I save it you see we have some padding on the left side and right side and inside a text field let's give some style first let's uh, enable uh, let's use the decoration inside a decoration we have an input decoration input decorations inside of the input decoration we want enable it border so enable it border outline input border and inside that we want the border side if you want if you want a border side you can also add a border side for example border side we have a color colors dot white just an example but we will change it later and now you see the border side and we can also add a border radius border radius dot circular 15 if i save it now you see we have a uh, actually we have also border radius now uh, we want to add uh, also focus border if i click on this this is box border you see we don't have a nothing so we need we can basically copy this enabled border and paste it and change it focused border and now inside a decoration input decoration we want to add a color so first let's just add a fill it true and towards the fill it fill color i want colors dot deep purple dot shade maybe 200 now you see we have a fill color now we want to change this border side color maybe deep purple because white doesn't look good deep purple if i save it now you see have a beautiful text field i hope so it's beautiful now uh, let's just remove these warnings So now we have actually we have the text field and we have the button. Now uh, we need to add uh, the logic. But before that, let's just give some hint to this text field. For example, um, there is a inside a decoration. I guess there is a hint text. Let's just add add more add new to do items. Add a new to do items. You see, we have a hint. Now let's just add the logic. So when we press this function, we want to create more to dos. So for that, we can come to this floating action button. And here you can see that we have an unpressed function. So here we will add a function name. Let's say save new task. And we can come back, come here and create this function so wait save new task and we create a set state set a set state we want to add a to-do list dot add want to create a new item so for that uh, we need to get the user input so to get the user input we need to create a you know controller inside a text field so for this uh, basically uh, what i want to go what i want to do is that i want inside a text field this is my text field so here i have a text field you can see so inside a text field if i write a controller we have a controller property so we need to create this controller here inside the home page state final controller text editing controller 
and we need to specify this controller here it's a private you can see controller and now we need to when we add this to-do list we want to add the controller dot text basically what the user types here and we can add a column and now if I save it and write a new to-do item for example new to-do added and if I click on this add you see we are getting a range error the reason why is that we need to add here the integer uh, the biggest uh, we need to basically add here the we have a two properties right we have the control.tax we have a string and we have also checkbox right we almost forgot the checkbox so we can add a column and say false now if i save it and here if i add a new item add a new item if i click on add you can see we have added a new item we can also check this and uncheck it but you see we have a still the tax we have added so we want to remove that how can we do that so after the to-do list.add we can add controller.clear and now if i refresh that page and if i add a new new to do added if i save it if i added this function you see it will disappear because we are using controller.clear so that's it this is how we can create a, or save a new task now we want to delete the task so how can we do that so in flutter we have the package called it slideable package so you can all either add the delete icon here inside a container or we can make it slideable i want to make it slideable so for that we have a slideable package as i told earlier so now let's go to slideable package so if you type flutter slideable package you will see the flutter slideable so let's go and install this flutter slideable i'm going to copy that and i'm going to go to pubspec.yaml and after the cupertino icons i want to add it and make sure you get run flutter pub yet you see i have already done that now we are going to go to to-do list and inside a to-do list we have a container so this container actually covers checkbox new to do items like the strings we also we want to add the slideable action at the end of this container so for that let's wrap this container widget with the another widget and we will call this slideable and this slideable widget includes you know the another thing which is and action pane and for the action pane uh, we there is also there is actually motion and children now if i save it uh, we have a motion so motion basically means that the widget which animates when the slideable moves you know we want the stretch animation stretch motion animation and for the children we have to create a list and inside that we need to create a slideable action slideable action so this slideable action includes or requires on pressed function because when we press this slideable action what happens so this is what it's asking for and also it will requires you know some icon so basically we want icons dot delete and now uh, for the function now for the function when we press this function what happens uh, basically uh, we want to delete so i'm going to first go to the constructor here i'm going to create a, let's just add the required here i'm going to create a new function here the final 
function and this will be build context and I'm going to name it delete function and let's create a constructor and here we will specify this delete function delete function and for the icon let's remove this icon and again say icons dot delete and now we can save it now if i refresh this page and if i slide this you see now we have a slidable um, delete function but i want to change the border radius first so for this we can come to the slidable action after the icon you can say border radius border radius dot circular 15 and if i save it now you see if i slide it we have a delete function you can also change the the color of this slidable uh, action for example color background color color dot red you see it will change it but i like the white color more here so now let's work on this uh, function if i click on this delete function it will this uh, container should disappear basically it should delete this uh, list so for this uh, we have created the delete function so now uh, we need to create this delete function so inside a to-do list let's make this require it and inside a home page we need to create a delete function and let's say delete task and this delete function basically gets you know the uh, it will get you know the the value delete function and will specify the index sorry it will not uh, get the value it will get the context because it's a build context right so now we will create a delete task uh, we will come here and after the say task we create a void delete task and we'll specify the index and inside a delete task we'll create a set state and we want uh, to do list dot remove at and the index and now if i save this and for example if i remove this drink coffee as you can see it will disappear so now if i create a new task for example uh, learning to do and add it you see we have created now we can check box this because we have already learned flutter we can say learn flutter and now uh, if i delete this it will disappear so i think that's all about this here you see we don't have any padding i just want to add more padding here so for this you can come to this floating action button and inside this row you can wrap this widget with the padding and let's say symmetric symmetric horizontal maybe 15 or 20 if i save it now you see we have some padding on the left side as well so you can add more to do's so that's all about it for this video i hope you this video was helpful please don't forget to comment and like this video i will see you in the next videos hello everyone in this video we are going to develop this quiz app as you can see we have a start screen questions and answer screen and finally we have also results screen where you can see your result how many questions you got how many correct answers you got and you can also click on restart quiz to start from scratch so without wasting time let's get started and create this quiz app so this is where we are going to get started 
So I'm inside my main.dart. So first I'm gonna remove all the code inside main.dart and I'm gonna create all the codes from scratch. So here first we need to create a main function and inside we are going to use run app and inside the run app I'm going to use material app widget and this has a home argument and here I'm gonna use scaffold and here I have to put semicolon. Now if I save this code and restart the app you will see the blank scaffold of course before we get started i want to remove this debug banner i don't like to see it so i'm gonna go inside material app let's use debug show check it mode banner and i'm gonna make it false also let's add a comma to format our code and restart the app and you can see it's now removed now inside my scaffold widget i'm gonna use body and here first we are going to use the container the reason why we are using container because we want to give background color specifically gradient and for that we are using container so inside container we have the decoration argument and here we will use box decoration and inside box decoration we have the gradient argument and here there are different types of arg like the gradients you can see linear radial and sweep gradient and other so we will use linear gradient and inside we need to use the colors and it's gonna be a list so you have to open square brackets also put comma here so inside these colors we need to basically use some colors let's say colors dot deep purple let's make it deep purple let's double it and if i restart the app and you will see that it's the same color because we are using the same deep purple color let's make let's add first const before this box decoration to remove these warnings and then let's change one of these let's make the first one a bit lighter and the next one a bit darker to differentiate the colors right i'm gonna save it and restart the app and you can see there is a, some difference right let's make one of them a bit lighter as well and now let's restart the app and now you can see the difference right this the right side is darker and the left left side is lighter now i want to change the position of this you know the gradient so inside the linear gradient i'm gonna use begin and for that i'm gonna use alignment alignment dot top left and for the end i'm gonna use alignment dot bottom right and if i save it and restart the app you can see that the the position is now different because we are using begin and an end so next uh, for this container I'm gonna give the child inside this container of course child and for the child we can simply use const text and let's say this is gonna be a start screen and if I save it and restart this app you can see it's now showing like this so i want to separate this start screen into a new separate file so for that inside my lib folder i'm gonna create a new folder and i'm going to call it screens inside screens let's create a new file start screen dot dart i'm gonna save it let's create stateless widget and call it start screen so inside this start screen i'm going to basically return center widget i'm going to explain why i'm why i'm using center widget here so inside center widget i'm using child and here uh, we will use the column because we will have some image text and some other buttons so inside column i'm going to use children and here let's use the text start screen for now save it and inside my main dot dart instead of 
using text here i'm going to simply use start screen i'm gonna import it you can add accounts here and if i restart the app you see that we have the start screen but you cannot see it because it's in the it's behind this the default uh, simulator with like the the what can i say the which the like clock and it's the the default phone uh, behind so so now uh, i'm going to make this center so I'm, I'm gonna go to start screen inside column i'm gonna make it main access alignment main access alignment dot center and here you will see the start screen so the reason why we are using here the center widget because we want to fill all this background with this gradient color so if i remove this uh, let's remove this center widget and if i save it you can see it's not filling the all the space so the basically the center widget takes all the space and you can see there now so first we are going to use the image so to use the image first we need to have this quiz logo image so you can find it in the video description i'm gonna put the link so inside my project quiz app i created assets folder inside i have images folder and inside i have the quiz logo.png before we need before we use this image we need to go to popspec.yaml and here we inside my assets i have to uncomment this and here I have to show the directory, which is assets, images, quiz, logo.png. Or you can also, you don't have to write the, the last one. Like if you show assets images and save it. And if you go to start screen here, if I use image.asset here, let's show the directory assets, images, and quiz logo.png and let's add a comma and you can see this image right we can also give widths let's say 300 or 250 let's let's say and if i save it it's a bit small so i'm gonna make it 300 i think this one is good so after the image we have the text and let's use the const text and let's say learn flutter the fun way and if i save it and add a comma you can see there is no space between this image and text so i'm gonna go and add a const sized box and height will be let's say 30 and if i save it you can see that we have the learn the flutter the fun way we can add a more height let's make it 80 and let's give some style to this text style text style font size it's gonna be like 30 and it's too much let's make it 24 and for the colors let's use colors dot white and i think it looks better now so after the text we have one more thing which is the button so i'm going to use this sized box after the text and let's make this like i don't know maybe 50, 30 and after that let's use some button and i'm gonna use outline button this has a unpressed and child so for unpressed for now i'm gonna make it blank we don't have any logic now for the child let's use const text and it's gonna be start quiz and you can see start quiz but it, you can see that the color doesn't look good so i want to style it inside outline button i'm gonna use style uh, outline button dot style form and here i'm gonna change the big the foreground color 
colors.white. I save it, you can see it looks now better. Also, I want to add, you know, some icon before the start quiz. So for that, what we can do, instead of creating a row and using the icon and outline button, here we have ins inside outline button, we have something called icon, but we have to remove this child and use label instead. And inside this outline button, we can use icon, icon, icons dot arrow right alt and that's at a const and if i save it you can see we have something like this arrow right icon and this is now pressable but there is no any logic for now but for now this is our start screen so next as you can see this button doesn't do anything for now so when we click this button it should go to our question screen, right? So before we do that, we need to do something. So inside the lib folder, first let's create a new file and call it quiz.dart. And inside that, we have to create a stateful widget, STF, the shortcut. And here I'm gonna call it quiz. And inside the build, we need to return material app. Inside, you can see now we are going to take this material app from run app and here inside quiz.dart I'm going to return and here I have to import the start screen and now inside my main.dart I'm going to import this quiz and you can also add a const to remove the warning and you can remove this import and if I save it and restart the app everything looks same nothing has changed we have just imported this material app from main.dart to quiz quiz.dart as you can see okay next we have to create the question screen so inside screens folder i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it questions screen.dart and inside i'm going to create a stateful widget and i'm going to call it questions screen and i can simply return as text for now const text questions screen i'm gonna save it now inside my quiz.dart first thing i have to do we have to basically store this star screen into variable because we need to make some logic here when we press this button we need to go to question screen right so for that inside my quiz dot dart i'm going to first um, store this start screen to variable so this variable this variable is gonna be a widget because this is the start screen is the custom widget that we have created right so widget and let's say start screen and it's gonna be start screen and we can also put a const to remove the warning and you can see we have the widget start screen now we have to also write the method to switch the screen right from start screen to the question screen so for that i'm gonna create a method called switch screen and it's gonna be we have to use set state because the, the it will change the state from start screen to the question screen so i'm going to use start screen equals to question screen right and here we can put the const to remove the warning again here so what we have done we have just imported we have just stored this start screen to variable and this variable is a custom widget that's why we use it the widget here and then here we created the method called switch screen and here we are using set state and we are simply storing the start screen into this question screen. And here, instead of using the start screen, we can now use like start screen, right? Because the start screen is basically a widget and this is the start screen. So here guys, uh, instead of calling this start screen, I think it's better to call this active screen and it will be more like uh, meaningable it will be more correct so active screen and here also active screen 
and that's it. Now, in order to make this button workable, here we have created switch screen. Now we need to pass this switch screen method to the star screen because this button is inside a star screen. As you can see, this is the outline button. And here you can see we have unpressed function and it's now blank. So now we have to create the positional argument. Like inside a star screen, I'm going to create final void function and it's gonna be let's say start quiz and we need to create the positional argument and we can do that by this dot start quiz and comma super dot key now if we go to quiz dot dart it shows that we need to have here the method right you can see it's asking us to have a method because here we have created the method of final void function so now we can simply use this switch screen here switch screen we have to pass this switch screen right hold on switch let me copy this switch screen and here let's simply pass it so as you can see it's now showing me error saying that argument of constant creation must be constant so we have to remove this const and also now it's saying that the instance member switch screen cannot be accessed in initializer and the reason why it's saying that because we need to init we need to use init state because it's now doing it's everything is working simultaneously so basically i'm going to use init state and after this super dot init state i'm going to call it like active screen active screen equals to the star screen and here we can simply pass this switch screen right switch screen and now we can make this active screen like here we can basically make this nullable but what i mean by nullable is that we can make this active screen a widget or it's gonna be a null so this question mark says that active screen can be the the, the widget or null now if we go to start screen and here we can simply use start quiz inside this button right start quiz so i'm going to remove this and simply use start quiz and if i restart the app now and if I click on start quiz, you can see the question screens. Now, if we go to question screens and make this text to this wrap with widget, and it's, if we wrap is with center, and let's remove this const here, and let's use a const here. Let's also add a comma to format, and now you can see the question screens. So if I restart the app, by default, you will see this star screen. And if we click on the start quiz, you can see the question screens. Because here we are simply using the function. We are here creating a positional argument function. The reason why we are creating is that because here we are passing this switch screen, right? And also we are using the init state to initially, um, to initially see this active screen. I hope you guys understand so let's move on before we move on there is also another solution without using init state so we can remove this init state along with widget active screen and now here we can create a new variable called active screen the same name and we can store this uh, start screen to this active screen and here inside set state now we will create a new string it's gonna be a questions screen and we can store this question screen to this active screen now inside a build we need to write the logic and here we want to use some ternary condition right so let's call this final screen widget and so if active screen is equal to start screen 
if this is a case then we want to use the start screen right start screen and also we need to pass this switch method switch screen method and otherwise we want to display const question screen right and if we save it now we are getting the switch screen is getting the arguments of constant creation okay we have to remove this const and if I use this screen widget instead of active screen and if I restart the app and if I click on the start quiz start quiz you can see the question screen right this is the another solution and this solution is recommended and it's gonna be a best practice so now let's work on with this question screen so the, in order to display the questions we need to have the data so in order to use data first we need to have a model inside the lib folder let's create a new folder and call this models inside this models folder let's create a new file and call it quiz question dot dart here let's create a class quiz question and inside let's create a final string text and final list it's gonna be a string list and let's call these answers and here let's use a shortcut to create a constructor and it's gonna be a positional constructor let's save this and now we can create a data inside a lib folder and let's create a data folder and inside let's create a new file called this questions.dart and here first let's you create a questions list and this is going to be a quiz question and here we have the text for the text I'm gonna say what are the main building blocks of flutter UIs and for the answer it's gonna be a list and as you can see it's showing some error because we need to add a const to this constructor and this will remove the error now here inside at list let's create the answers so let's gonna it's first gonna be widgets components and blocks and finally functions and this is our first question so here we are using the text and here we are using the list of answers so I'm going to basically copy my data and I'm gonna paste it because this might take a while so I'm going to paste it here as you can see we have about like seven questions and you can also copy it from my github so I will paste the link in the description so once we save this we can move on to the next so we need to now display these questions inside this question screen now inside questions screen we need to display the questions so I'm gonna remove this text and I'm going to return column children first it's going to be a text it's going to be the question for now let's make this manual I'll, after that we will you know import the questions from our data and then here we need size box let's say height 30 and finally we need to have elevated button so we can make this elevated button custom because otherwise we need to make this uh, like several you know uh, so it's gonna be a repetition so in order to avoid that we need to go to lib folder create a new folder let's say components and let's create a new file answer button dot dart and it's gonna be a stateless widget answer button and let's return elevated button and this is going to be text so here let's create a final string text 
and final void function is going to be on tab. Let's create a constructor and it's going to be a named constructor. And let's add a comma here on pressed. Let's use on tab for the text. Let's use the text, add a comma. So now let's go to question screen here. Let's import this answer button. And for the text, let's say answer one. And for on tap, let's make it blank for now. And it's saying the invalid constant value. So let's remove this const and add it here. So let's also display this to the center. I'm going to use main axis alignment dot center. Now you can see that, right? So now we can copy this answer button and let's change it to question answer two and answer three. And let's come back answer button. So let's come back to the question screen. And if I save it, now you can see answer one, answer two, and answer three. Now we need to actually import our actual data. This is just a manual data, as you can see. But here, if you go to the data, you can see we have the questions, right? So we are going to import the questions as well as these answers inside our question screen. Now we need to display our actual data, right? Actual questions and actual our answers right instead of just displaying this manual text so for that uh, inside build first we are going to create a new variable called current question and we are going to store these questions and it's going to be the zero right this is the question right and it's going to be the questions and inside the list it's going to be a zero so now we are going to go to inside this text. I'm going to use this current question dot text. And we have to remove this constant. If I save it, you can see now we are reading what are the main building blocks of the flattery Y, which is the, the first question, right? And then next we need to also display this answer button. So for that, I'm going to remove this answer button and we can only remind one and we can also remove this for now and first I'm going to use the current question and before using that I have to use the spread operator current question dot answers dot map and we have to map this item and it's going to be we have to open these curly braces we have to return this answer button. So for the text, I'm going to return item or is you can also say answer, answer. And for on tab, let's make it blank for now. And let's also add a comma. And you can see our codes now, right? Our answers like widgets, components, blocks and functions. Now, if I restart the app, and if I click on start quiz, you can see the question and you can also see the answers from our data. So now, as you can see, our buttons and our text doesn't look very good. So let's give some style. So first of all, I'm going to give the style for this text. So let's add a style, text style. And for the font size, let's make this 18 and for the color, let's use colors.white and let's make this to the center. So for that, uh, we can simply use text align after the text, text align and text align dot center. And you can see it's now in the center. And I also want to make these buttons like stretch so for that inside a column i'm going to use cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot stretch so this will stretch all the way 
And now we have to give some padding. So let's add a const before adding padding. So now to add a padding, we need to wrap this column with container widget. And inside a container, we are going to use the margin h inset h inset dot all, and it's gonna be maybe forty, right? And I think it looks better now. And let's also add a const to these h insets. And now I think our text and answers looks better. Now, as you can see, guys, the answer of this question is the first one always if i go to the questions.dart you can see this is the question and the answer is the first question for all these questions right so that's why we need to change the order of this answer because otherwise it's gonna be kind of weird right so to change that we have to use something called shuffle so for that we have to go to quiz question.dart and here after this final string and final list let's first um, change this position i mean let's take this to the top and after this final first we are going to use the list and it's going to be a string and here we need to create the the method or function get shufflet let's say answers and it's going to be a function so we need to run final so we have to first store the list of answers for the list for that let's say shufflet answers or let's say shufflet list basically it's gonna be a list list and it's going to be off and these answers right this answers list and here we can simply return but before that let's use the shuffle list dot shuffle method and now we can basically return this shuffle list right and basically here we are creating a list of string and we are creating a method get shuffle answers and here we are storing these answers to this shuffle list and then we are using the shuffle method function and then we are returning this shuffle list and now we can go back to the question screen and here instead of using current question dot answer we can simply use get shuffle answers dot map and if i save it you can see that the correct answer was widgets and it's now changed the order and other questions also the same now you will see in the upcoming video so next when we select the answer we should see the next question to have this logic we need to write some method so as you can see right now inside my question screen you can see that we are now assigning the current question to question zero which means this is the questions zero right so we need to display the second question and third question and all the questions so for that we need to go to question screen state and inside we need to first create a new variable and let's call this variable current question index and let's assign it to zero and under that let's create a method answer question and let's use the set state and now we have to increment this current question index and the simple way is to use double plus and this will increment to this, to this zero to one and now we have to instead of showing the question question zero we have to use the current question index and we have to use this answer question inside our function on tab and if i save it and restart the app you see that if i click on start quiz if i select the answer you can see the next question right you can select it and of course in, at some point we will get some error but don't worry we are going to fix this to fix this problem soon now i want to give some style to this answer button and also this question text because it looks a bit ugly now 
So first I'm going to change this text. So I'm going to give style. So for that, we have to go to question screen and here you will see the question and it's going to be the text. So here you can see we are using the font size 18. Let's make this 24. And here let's use font weight, font weight dot bold. And now I think it looks better. I also want to change the font family. So uh, for that, we need to use Google fonts. I'm going to open my terminal. I'm going to add flutter pop at Google fonts. And we need to wait a few seconds. And after that, we can go and basically, instead of using style here, I'm going to copy this. And here I'm going to use Google fonts. I think it's still adding. Now I think it's done. Google fonts dot Lato. I'm going to use the Lato family. And inside I'm going to use the color. It's going to be colors dot white. And also add a comma. If I restart the app again, and if I click on start quiz, you can see it's, it looks better now, but we have to also the give the size font size font size. It's going to be 24 and font family font family. It's going to be font family. I think it's font weight, right? I, I made a mistake. Sorry. Font weight. It's going to be font weight dot bold. So if I save it, now you can see we have a different font family, which is Lato, and we have the font size of 24 and it's going to be a bold. Now let's give some uh, space, some padding to this answer button. So let's go to answer button. Here, let's first make this text align center, text align dot center. And now you can see it looks better, our answer button and our questions. So if I select that, you can see it looks way better than previous one. Now, when we select the correct answer, we have to store these selected answers into some, into some list. So for that, let's go to quiz.dart and inside quiz state, we have to create a list and it's going to be a string and this is going to be selected answers and we have to create an empty list and here after switch screen we need to create a new function and let's call this choose answer and this is going to be string answer and here we have to basically um, add this selected answers dot add this answer and after that, we have to go to question screen and here we need to create a new name and argument. And this is going to be a function function. And we can say on select answer. And here we have to add this name and argument. Now we have to go back to quiz.dart. And as you remember here, we created some ternary condition. And I want to use if condition, the alternative, it's going to be the same logic, but using the if condition. So before we use if condition, firstly, let's use widget and it's going to be screen widget. And here we are going to assign start screen and also pass this switch screen method. And here let's use if condition. So don't worry, it's going to be the same logic with this ternary condition. So here, if active screen equals to the question screen, right? It's the question screen, then screen widget equals to question screen. And here we have to use on select answer, the function that we have just created on select answer. This is going to be a function. And basically we have to assign this to this 
choose answer function that we have just created, right? Choose answer. And also we have to put some comma and white saying this the argument type void function string cannot be assigned to the parameter type void function. So we have to go back here. I think it's function. Yeah, here we have to add string answer. And now if we go back and here we can add a semicolon. And now as you can see, it works. I'm inside my question screen dot dart and we have some logic left inside this answer question function. So here inside this answer question function, we need to add a string selected answer. And inside this function, we have to use widget dot on select answer and we have to add selected answer and under that instead of giving this answer question on tab we have to use answer question and we have to add answer so if i start the quiz and select the answer you will still still see this range error so to solve this range error problem we have to go to quiz.dart and here inside this choose answer function we have to add some condition so if let's say selected answers dot length equals to questions dot length then we have to use set state and here we have to make this active screen equal to start screen right start screen also before that we also need to add selected answers and we have to make this empty and if i save it and restart the app and if i start the quiz and select the all the answers you can see now we are starting from scratch again so we can select it again and we can start the quiz from scratch again now we have to go and create the results screen so for that let's go to lib folder inside screens let's create a new file and call this results screen dot dart here let's create a stateless widget and let's call this results screen and here first we want to display the column so it's going to be a column children and first I'm going to display you answer it x out of y questions correctly and after this text we have to also have some sized box height it's gonna be like 30 and next we also display another text and for now let's say list of answers and questions and one more size box and finally we need some uh, you know the outline button to restart the quiz so for the child let's say const text restart restart quiz and if I save it and now in order to display this we have to go to our we have to go to our quiz quiz.dart and here we have to add some logic right so here uh, we have to add a question screen so we have to make this instead of you know using active screen active screen to the start screen now this time we have to display the results screen and here in order to display this result screen we have to use some conditions so if if active screen equals to result screen results screen then we have to display the result screen right that we have just created screen widget equals to 
results screen results screen and if I save this and restart the app and if I start the quiz select the answers you can see the the results screen but as you can see it looks very ugly now because we have to go to the results screen and here we need to wrap this sized box sized box and inside we have to use double for the width we have to use double dot infinity to take all the space and if i save it you can see now it looks better but we have to make this center so i'm going to make this column main axis alignment to the center now you can see your answer it you can see some text and uh, the button right we can also change the style of this button so for that let's use the button that we earlier use it so i'm gonna use icon because we will also use icon icon icons dot restart restart alt and let's add a const here let's use label instead of child and here let's also use style outline button dot style from foreground color colors dot white if i save it now you can see it looks better now we have to display our selected selected answers right but next we we have to pass the data to the result screen and for that inside my result screen i need to create new name it argument and this is going to be final list and string and this is going to be chosen answers and let's create a constructor name it constructor and inside the quiz.dart you can see inside my results screen i have to use these chosen answers and i have to use selected answers and to do that we have to remove this const this is not a constant so selected answers and if i save it now it's done right so next in order to combine the questions with these chosen answers we have to create some i would say map so inside my results screen first i'm going to create a list and this is going to be a map and this map is going to be a string and also it's going to be an object so which means that it's going to be a different type and we have to get the summary data so i'm going to use get summary data and then inside this method we need to first use final list map and this is going to be string and object and now here we have to create a summary and we need to make this empty and after that we have to use some loop some condition here I'm going to make this var i equals to zero and i is lesser than chosen answers dot length and then i plus plus and we have to inside this loop we have to add summary dot add and we need to add some map and we have to uh, create the curly braces for that inside these curly braces first i'm going to display the questions index and this is going to be i and next we need to display the questions and it's going to be question and questions i dot text next we also need to add the correct answer correct answer and this is going to be question questions i dot answers and it's going to be zero and we have to add a comma instead of semicolon and finally we also need to add a 
user answer and this is going to be chosen answer answers and then i now finally after this loop we have to return this summary and this error will go away now to display this list of questions and answers i want to create a new separate file inside my components folder i'm gonna create summary or let's say questions summary dot dart and inside this dart file i'm going to create a stateless widget and let's call this questions summary and we have to return basically the the column right to display the to display the text the questions and answers right so for that um inside a column first we need to instead of returning the children we have to return some data and for that we have to create first the data final list map and it's going to be a string object and this is going to be summary data and let's create this positional argument this dot summary data and here we can use this summary data summary data dot map and it's gonna be a data and here we have to return row and it's going to be a children and also we have to by but for now you can see it's giving me error it's saying that the argument type iterable row cannot be assigned to the parameter type list so we have to convert this to the list simply by adding to list and this error will go away and now here let's add a semicolon and also if you want you can add a cons now but it will be changed for later we will add it for now inside the row children let's use the text and it's gonna be data and inside this data we have to display the questions question index that we have created in the result screen so you can copy this question index and question index and it's gonna be as integer and we have to wrap this with parentheses because otherwise we will get an error and after that we have to add plus one and this is also going to we have to going to wrap this with parentheses and i'm gonna add it here as well and after that we have to change it to a string and comma as well now i can save it and next we also need to display some other information before we display and show other information let's display this question index first so for that let's go to result screen and here let's remove this list of questions and answers and let's import our question summary and here we have to get summary data this method that we created get summary data and also add a comma and after that you don't see if i restart the app and if i start the quiz and if i select the all the answers you can see we don't see anything because the reason why we are not seeing because inside my quiz.dart we are here simply making the selected answers empty again right so we have to remove this inside the quiz.dart and we have to restart the app and now if i start the quiz and select the, all the answers and you see that here one two three four five six right which means that this is now working right this question index now we want to display the other things like question correct answer and user answer now after this text let's use the column and children and inside these children let's display the text data and we have to first use the question the question that we have created inside a map this one 
it's better to copy and paste not to make any mistakes spelling mistakes and this is going to be as string and also we have to add some sized box and height will be 5 and now we have to add another tax and this one is going to be data and this is going to be user answer and and this is also going to be as string and finally we have the text and this is going to be the correct answer right so data and let's copy this correct answer and let's add this correct answer and this is also going to be as string so now here we can add a sized box here as well and if I save it you can see that uh, some of the questions and you can also see the user answer and corrected answer you can see that we are getting some right right overflow by some pixels right so it's better to wrap this column with a widget and this is going to be expanded if I save it now it looks better right we don't see any errors now let's go and style this the column these children these tags and this is also the number index now let's go and wrap this column with widget and this is going to be sized box and let's give it a height and this is going to be 300 and if i save it now you can see we are getting bottom overflow don't worry now we have to wrap this column with another widget and this is going to be single child scroll view and if i save it now it looks way better than previous one right you can see next we need to go to results screen and we have to wrap this column with the container and we have to give some you know margin and it's going to be h dot all and it's gonna be 40 and this inch h incest this margin will have you know you can see the text is uh, we don't have any padding or margins if i save it now you can see it's better right now let's go and also display how many answers we corrected and out of how many questions to have this logic inside my results screen so inside a build we need to create a variable called final num total questions and it's going to be questions dot length and next also let's also correct this spelling error and here final num correct questions and this is going to be summary data summary data and this is going to be get summary data dot where and it's going to be data and we need to return data and this is going to be user answer right this is going to be user answer here i'm gonna copy and paste it to avoid some spelling errors and if it's equals to data correct correct answer right this time correct answer and now here simply inside the you answer it here we have to display the dollar symbol and then here num correct correct questions out of so out of and this is going to be num total questions right and here we have to remove the const and if i save it so the reason why we are seeing these all the tags because we are here need to add after this parenthesis we have to add the length right if I save it now you can see you answered one out of six questions correctly and if I restart the app and start the quiz and if, if I for example select again and 
let's say gain, you see that you answered four out of six questions correctly. So before we give style to these questions and answers, I want to make this button workable, restart quiz. So for that, inside the results screen, first we are going to create a function. So let's call this final and let's call this function. And this is going to be void function and it's going to be on restart, restart and let's create this function so it's gonna be required this dot on start let's add a comma and inside this so after we add this we have to go to quiz.dart so inside this if logic we have to add on restart and this is going to be the function that we have to create so in, on on top after these functions let's create a new function and let's call this restart restart quiz and this is going to take the set state and after that first we have to make the selected answers to empty list and after that we have to make this active screen equals to question screen right question screen and let's also add semicolon and we have to take this restart quiz and at the bottom of this result screen we have to use this on start on restart sorry and if we go to quiz.dart we are getting some error and here we have to basically use restart quiz restart quiz and if I restart the app and if I start the quiz select the, the answers and if I restart the quiz you can see it will start from the scratch again as you can see it's now working now let's go and give some style to these questions and answers so I'm inside my question summary dot dart so inside expanded I have a column so inside this column I'm going to use cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot start and if I save it you can see now it's getting to the left side now let's give some space between these you know and the index question index and also disease uh, right side of these question and answers so for that uh, between this row we have the text question index so between this text and index expanded I want to give const sized box and width and maybe it's gonna be 10 and um, if I save it now you can see there is uh, some space so we can give it like 15 maybe and we can also give some style to this uh, the questions right so for that let's go to the question and here I'm going to add a comma and inside let's use style text style and font size maybe 18 if I save it you can see it's now better but it's too big so I'm gonna make it 16 and for the color let's use colors dot white and for the font weight let's use font weight dot bold if I save it you can see it's clear now but you can see that 16 is too much let's make it 12 and next uh, let's add a const and next we need to add a you know some style to this user answered and also the correct answer for user answered I'm going to add a style text style and for the font size let's make it 12 font let's fade color colors dot maybe pink and you can see it's a uh, pink it's the user and user answer it and this is what the user answered and for the 
correct answer, I'm going to give a style and this is going to be text style, font size 12 and for the color, I'm going to use colors.light blue and this is the correct answer, right? The first one is user answer it, the correct answer is this, the blue one. And finally, we have to add some style to this question, like you answered one out of these six questions correctly. For that, let's go to result screen and here we have the text. Let's add a comma. Here, let's add a style, text style. And for the font size, let's make this 14, font weight bold. And for the color, colors.white, colors.white. If I save it, and also we have to make this center, text align, text align dot center. And let's also add the const. And finally, let's also add some color to these questions like the index. Question summary, let's go to here, let's add a const to remove these warnings. And we have the question index, let's add a comma. And here, let's give style, const text style. And here, let's add a color, colors.white. And for the font size, let's make this 12. I think we can make this 14. And for the font weight, let's make this font weight dot bold. And if I save it now, I think it looks better, right? So if I restart the quiz, so if I select now from scratch again, and you can see that, and now you see that you answered four out of six questions correctly, and you can see the questions, and this is the purple one is the, the user answer it, and this blue one is the correct answer, right? So that's all about it for this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section and I will see you in the next videos.